Hello and welcome to Unwritten Review. My name is Vito, I'm one of the moderators of this wonderful site and I'll try not to be too funny for you. In fact, I'll also try and review some books. The first book that we've got for you, ever, is David Peace's novel GB84. Now, if all you know about the miners' strike is what you learned in Billy Elliot, then really well done for sitting through an Elton John musical. However, to say this book is about the miners' strike is simplistic and barely touches the surface of what is a very complex issue. It's kind of like walking up to someone in Mossad and saying, why are you picking on old German guys? Like the Red Riding trilogy and Elements of the Damned United, the book uses its third-person narrative quite well. However, the most affecting passages of the book are written in the first person and they are little side stories from two picketers called Martin and Peter. They describe in first-hand detail the defiance and endurance of the police and government's underhand methods and then eventually, and heartbreakingly, they surrender to the government's underhand tactics. Tactics which Arthur Scargill at first second guesses, but when the government start using increasingly illegal means, his hope that everything will remain strictly above board becomes disastrously short-sighted. That's not to say that the main plot isn't also affecting as well, including, and it does, of course, Arthur Scargill, called the president here, Margaret Thatcher, who's never shown, and various people under their command, from, you know, the trade union treasurer to, you know, the little guy that listens in on people and he imagines them having sex and what he would do to them if he ever caught them and maybe I'm just projecting what I thought he was thinking. There's also two sort of very militant sort of underhand you know, sort of hired thug characters, you know, one called Neil Fontaine and another one called The Mechanic, and they're sort of eventually pitted against each other in this sort of like, you know, really gritty, Ken Loach direct, double impact sort of way. And I say that because, you know, when I read it, I imagine Jason Statham as both Neil Fontaine working for the government and The Mechanic, this sort of like ex-serviceman who just do whatever job he can to get by, even if it means working for the miners and then pretending to work for the miners, but he's really working for the government, but he's actually working for the miners. I'm confused. I should probably read the book twice. So in my head it became Jason Statham versus Jason Statham. But you know, Jason Statham in the bank job where it was like cool and he was a bit down rather than Jason Statham in The Transporter which was a bit too flashy. Although having said that, Jason Statham in The Transporter could probably kick in Jason Statham in the bank job. So I should probably thought of another actor when I was thinking who was in the book. Alas, towards the end of the book, Peace then decides to up the ante with um, some rather unnecessary violence. I mean, don't get me wrong, violence can be fine as long as you have, I don't know, an alibi or, in my experience, a safety word. The machinations of the police in MI5 come off as a cut-rate licari. The violence is stylized in that faux intelligent way where we wanted to make violence justifiable. Although well, there was a couple of occasions where I actually had to reread paragraphs to just to check who had gutted who. There's also a rather unforgivable homage or rip-off from the film Seven. And if you're not really sure what moment I'm talking about, then I'll just say Gwyneth Paltrow's box. All in all though, I loved GB84. It is completely flawed and it's also completely brilliant. Peace's research is absolutely fantastic. His sense of place is absolutely fantastic and his characters are fantastic. If a few of them veer off the edge into caricature, as you would expect from a, a novel with character names such as The Mechanic and The Jew. But all in all, it is a challenging book in all the right ways and if nothing else, it'll probably make you feel a bit smarter next time you sit through Billy Elliot.